Toluca, uh, the, rising, the rising star of Mexican mining. Luca, it's the turnaround story of 2023. Um, two years ago, the company had a market cap of over $200 million. And today we're sitting at around 40. Um, the decline started with a, a Mexican mining bank that had provided some debt financing for the construction project at one of our assets. That bank failed in September 21. Um, they also had a very large stock position, which was sort of trickle trickle selling in the market last year, keeping a lot of pressure on the stock price. Um, and the truth is as well, the company has not delivered on a lot of expectations in the past too. So I came in at uh, the end of September. Um, it's an operating mining company, as Eric was saying, um, with two quality assets, either of which has got a valuation that's higher than our current market cap. Um, not much has changed since 2020. The rocks are the same since 2021 when we had that high evaluation. Um, the projects have actually advanced quite a bit. Uh, gold price is better. Metal prices generally are better than they, they were at the time. So this is a turnaround story. We are going to hit our major milestones for this year. For the Tawato project, there's two stages. We're actually going to hit the first stage at the end of next month. Um, we're in the, in the closing stages of a placing, as Eric mentioned. Um, we're going to be raising $20 million. We've already closed the first tranche of 18. We're getting strong support, really, in, in tough times, um, which I suppose is testament to uh, new faces, new plans, and a determination to finally get it done and get the company into, into shape and into the mining company that it, that it should be. And we've got great support from a, from a fund, Kalu fund, and also from our offtake partners, Trafigura, uh, who take all of our concentrates. So where are the projects? Uh, two operations, the established mine, Campo Morado, down in the southwest, and Taueto, you can see there, towards the northwest. Um, both are actually in production already. Taueto is already operating at about 400 tons a day. Both have got 10-year mine lives and a little bit more about the two of them. So Taweto is underground, fundamentally a precious metal operation. It's a gold mine. Over 60% of the revenues come from gold, the balance from silver, and then some minor contributions from base metals. Um, we started production in the middle of last year, uh, been gradually ramping up, testing systems, etc. And I say we're operating now at about 400 tons a day. 10-year mine life. There was a PFS done in 2022, an update to it. Um, and the figures out of that were pretty, pretty strong, uh, an IIR of about 65%, two-year payback. We're going to be producing about 40, just over 40,000 ounces equivalent next year uh, once we establish the mine at its nameplate capacity of 1,000 tons a day. Campo Morado, it's an underground VMS deposit. Um, we, get, we produce zinc, copper, and now lead concentrates uh, with precious metal credits. It's been in production since 2009. Uh, but the mine's changed considerably since then. Um, we have 20 years of resources there. Um, next, uh, 2021, as an illustration of, of what the mine is capable of doing, in 21, we, we produced $34 million of operating profit. Last year was a tough year when they ran into some difficult mineralogy and it affected the processing. We're on top of that now because the key to Capo Morado is forward planning, understanding the material you put in the plant and not getting any surprises. So that's what we're doing now. Uh, 2024, we should be producing about 24 gold equivalent ounces at Campo. So really the sort of why invest, the opportunity here, um, as I say, a mining company with, with uh, only a $40 million uh, uh, market cap. We're gonna have strong, strong cash flows in 2024. This year is all about getting it built and establishing that foundation. And it's really upwards from there. We can fund our own growth initiatives thereafter. As I said, 10 years of resources and reserves at both, at both sides. Um, I came on board in the end of September. I've got a background in, in operations and capital projects. I um, was with Lundin for a number of years. We've got a good team. We just brought in a new president. We've, we're making some changes to the board. There'll be some more of that shortly. 
And both projects, one of the things that attracted me was that both projects have got really good uh, upside potential. Um, so really, it's, it's about a re-rating. You know, when we start hitting these milestones this year, people have been waiting for this to happen for quite a long time. So when we finally get it done, uh, I think we'll get some recognition for that. And next year is actually going to be probably our highest ever cash flow, cash flow year. And you can see there, uh, based on the 2024 mine plans, we're currently trading at about a price to cash flow of one. Um, but the average for junior producers is just under three. So there's plenty of upside scope for us there um, once we get it done this year. So Tao Weto, um, I mentioned some of these figures already, uh, should be producing over 40,000 ounces a year consistently once we get the 1,000 tons a day. That's actually a view, of course, of the mill. Um, we are close to, as I said, close to hitting that first milestone. So the status of, of construction now, um, some of our key elements remaining is getting the tailings construction done, a few other things related to tailings. But we're also, uh, we've made some progress recently on the, the second mill that we'll need to advance to 1,000 tons a day. Um, so that, that's also good news. We're focused on the 500, but there, there was an opportunity to advance the second mill and, uh, and get that established at site. So we're pushing that forwards as well. And there's a bunch of other things going on. There's a real buzz at the site now um, to get it done. You can see we're operating two shifts on the right-hand side there uh, on, the, on the tailings construction. Lots of upside for both projects. This is Tao Weto. Um, the, bingo. Uh, the image on the left there, you can see the limits of the drilling uh, historically has only been about 300 meters below surface. And this shows the current resource areas. It's all open at depth. So there's some in-mine or near-mine exploration potential immediately. And then in the longer term, that's the mine area currently defined, the white box. There are vein systems you can see exposed on surface all the way up over the mountainside. Um, so there's great potential there to expand our resources. Uh, it really hasn't been drilled out uh, at all, some surface sampling on some of those other exposures. So great upside for the project. And the, the sort of medium term view there is get ourselves to about 100,000 ounces a year. Um, we'll be doing some drilling this year, a scoping study next year, feasibility, et cetera, to ramp up the throughput. I'd like to get, a, get this to being a 10 year mine at 2,000 tons a day rather than 1,000. This is Campo Morado. Um, one of the things we've done at Campo this year is to increase our contributions from copper, and we'll probably be doing more of that as well. Um, we've also just brought on stream a third concentrate stream. So we're now producing, in addition to zinc and copper cons with precious metals, we're also now doing a silver lead copper bulk con. Uh, and that literally is, uh, we'll be turning that on um, very shortly. And we've got a path forwards to just continually improve the performance at Campo Morado. Uh, it requires a lot of attention to geology and mineralogy and metal metallurgy. So that's what we're doing. Upside there too, uh, this is an illustration of some of the, uh, some of the near mine upside. Um, Nearstar, one of the previous owners, did some deeper drilling here. And they believed there was a second mineral horizon. They had some quite good hits in these holes. And some of the geophysics is showing the same thing. Not really been drilled out, so we're going to start that process later, than, later this year. And again, in the, in the wider concession area, a lot of other opportunities, 16 targets defined from geophysics and geochemistry. So they'll just get tested over the, over the next couple of years. This is our corporate structure. Um, this is based on what the, the numbers here are based on the first closing we did of 18 million in this current placing. Um, one of the big steps forwards we've made in the last, well, I guess over the course of about the last year, but in, in, including in this current placing is to really make a big dent in the debt position of the company, which was quite an overhang. We've knocked over $25 million off that debt, uh, and there's been some debt conversions and debt settlements in the current placing. And so really, the path here for us is get it built, get Taweto built. By the end of the year, two operating mines, uh, growth from there, look at organic growth for both of those operations, look at how we can increase the resource reserve base and, and increase throughput, but also obviously M&A. Uh, we're getting presented with projects all the time. Uh, we're looking at some at the moment. 
It's opportunistic, but basically with that platform established this year, it's sort of onwards and upwards from there. Thank you.